After my last video, you guys sent me some questions about actually making a sensory bin for your kids. So in today's video, I am taking you with me to show you how to make the perfect sensory bin. Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from the Purple Alphabet. We are going to Walmart and we're gonna check out all of the different options for sensory bins. I wanted to walk you through kind of what goes through my head when I'm shopping for sensory bin items so that when you go out and make your own, you have something to go off of. So we're gonna talk about what goes into a sensory bin. Let's head over to Walmart and get started. Be sure to watch to the end of this video because I'm gonna show you all the things that I ended up purchasing while shopping today so that you can get an idea of what it looks like when you put everything all together. The very first thing you're going to need is a container. This is what your sensory bin is going to be. There are so many different options, but you really need to take into consideration several things. First thing is storage space. How much space do you have in your home to actually keep this sensory bin is really going to influence your decision on what you use. And if I were you, I'd also look around the house to see if there are other items that you already have that you can use without paying anything. Take into consideration how many children are going to use this. If you have a smaller bin like these shoebox bins right here, probably not going to work for a lot of kids at one time because they'll be fighting for space. So you might need something bigger. Also take into consideration your base material. What are you going to be putting inside? We'll get to that one a little bit more in detail in just a minute. And then your location of where you are going to use it. Are you gonna be using it on top of a table, on the floor, outside? Make sure that your bin is small enough to fit in that space. Sterilite is usually a really good brand to use because they're durable and they come with lids. They have a lot of different sizes to choose from. I'd probably go with one that was a little bit more shallow than the big bins, like these flat ones here. If you need something big for water play, these would be perfect. Or they have these smaller containers here, which are great for maybe one or two kids playing. Also look in the kitchen section. I found these really great great dishwashing tubs in two different colors in white and black. They aren't clear, which would be a really great option. They also have some really nice Rubbermaid containers. We've seen these at Dollar Tree too, and they work just as well. And I've used them many, many times. The square one right here is probably one of my favorites that I've seen in this section. And just because I saw this peeking out on the counter, look how cute these little rainbow containers are. Might not be big enough for sensory bins. I don't know. They're really cute though. So I went ahead and got one. I was just between this size right here, which I actually have tons of this size at home already, or a little bit deeper. And I think I'm gonna take the deeper one and work with this one. Plus it comes with a lid. Next up, you need to decide on your base. The base is basically your main filler in the sensory bin. Lots of things to consider here. Many times people use food items. I'm gonna show you some non-food items too. But what you really need to consider is how messy do you want to get? There are many different messy levels that you can get with sensory bins from dry goods all the way to a water play and if you're like me I tend to stick towards the non messy ones but messy play is good so it's totally fine to do that if you wish take into consideration how many of these you're going to need how many bags of rice you're going to need how many boxes of pasta what your theme is going to be do you need a certain color do you need a certain style to go with something and your child's sensitivity level now sensory play is meant to work on using your senses particularly with touch so if you have a sensory sensitive child you might not want to pick a material that's super sticky. If you have a child that is a sensory seeker, you might want to choose something that makes a lot of noise. And again, storage time. How are you going to store this? Do you have the room for the sensory materials? And then preparation time. Some of these you can use straight out of the box or the bag. Others you might want to color with some food coloring. And do you have the time to do so? Showing you a lot of different options in the food, such as rice and pasta. Sometimes people like to cook the spaghetti noodles and color those and use those as sensory bin materials. And that definitely would take some more time. Some messier finds could be jello or pudding. These are also taste safe. There are some jello options that have no sugar in them, so they kind of deter eating it, but if they do taste it, it's still safe. I've used colored candy sprinkles many times for sensory bins. It's a really fun, colorful way to do it. Plus they come in several different styles that you can match a particular theme. It does cost a little bit more because you're gonna need a couple of these to go, but look for the giant tubs. They had a couple of different options here. So a couple of these will work really, really well for a sensory bin. And then when you're in the section, you might also
also want to look for some food coloring. You can also find food coloring at the dollar store too. I'm also a big fan of rice. You can color rice in many different colors and it lasts quite a while. You can reuse it over and over and over again. Walmart had quite the selection of different size bags. So what you can do is take your bag and place it into your bin to see if you have enough. Sometimes people like to use lentils. I mentioned this in my last Dollar Tree sensory bin video. That is another fun option. Over in Health and Beauty, you can find non-food items. That would be cotton balls, which would make a nice, safe, non-threatening sensory bin. And then a couple people have also suggest using Epsom salt. I haven't used Epsom salt yet, but I did check them out at Walmart. I couldn't find any plain ones. They all had fragrance inside of them. You just want to be careful that your children don't have any allergic reaction to the ingredients in your sensory bin base. More non-food items. Check out the party section. You could cut up some of this garland. It's very shiny, bright, and colorful. Comes in lots of different themes. These giant pom-poms are really great, which made me want to go over to the art section and look at that. Cut up pieces of yarn, particularly the big chunky one would work really well. Nice and soft and it comes in so many different colors. But I ended up going over to the food section again and trying to find some popcorn. I found two different types, some yellow ones and some white ones. I ended up going home with the white popcorn. Also check the baking section, particularly for those sprinkles. I found a giant jar right here. And then maybe this whole case of beads would be really fun for a sensory bin too. You can also choose one or more bases for your bin. I tend to stick to one personally but adding another one is a great option. Now that you have a container and you have your base, let's talk about some tools. Tools is what you use to manipulate the base and you can go in so many different ways with this. First, you're gonna to wanna to take into consideration the skill level of your child. What skill do you want to work on? Are they able to use a clothespin or use tongs or to squeeze things? That might be very frustrating with them if they can't really do it. So I choose things that you know they can do, such as using a cup to scoop and pour. Also take into consideration the size of their hands. You don't want to get a huge tool for them to use and then they can't use it because their hands are too small. Of course, storage, how you're going to store all of this, the cost of the items, and then what you want to do. Do you want to pour? Do you want to scoop? Do you want to use fine motor skills? Now I'm showing you a couple different things. Small Dixie cups are really great. These sponges are really great to cut up and use on their own or in a water play. You can of course check the kitchen section. I went to see if I can find some things to scoop and pour with. Lots of measuring cups cups and measuring spoons. Tons of different styles in these. They had plastic ones, metal ones, different colors. They even had some that were collapsible, which was kind of a fun option too. I saw these tongs, but I wasn't too impressed with them because they were really hard to pull open and close. So I'd skip the ones that don't really function very well. These little measuring cups are cute because they're kind of remind me of fidgets anyway, where they're collapsible. And then they have sets that come with both. I thought these might be really fun to pour things out of. They're little condiment minis in a couple different colors and containers. Measuring cups like these would be great for dumping and pouring dry and wet ingredients. Still on the hunt for those tongs. Can't find the really tiny ones that I'm looking for. Might have to get those on Amazon. Little ice cream scoop might be fun with some pom-poms like scooping ice cream. But way down here in the corner, I did find some smaller tongs, probably for an older preschooler. These will work really well. They're just under $2. I was trying to open them up to see if I can get them to function with one hand and they were worked pretty well. So that might be a good option for a younger child. Really did like this collapsible funnel. This would be great for pouring in sand or pouring in rice, lentils, or even water. In the baking section, they had some really fun candy molds. This is great to do one-to-one -one correspondence where you put one object in each section. Great for pouring in a whole bunch of rice in the little holes and filling up the whole container and then dumping it out. Something simple like this really mesmerizes a young child. They really like filling them up, especially when they're in these fun, bright colors and shapes. Also in the kids section, you can find things like little scoopers for sand, little shovels. This would work really well for a sensory bin. I was looking for some silicone cupcake wrappers. I didn't find any. These are paper, but silicone items like that would work really well as tools. Clothes pins for some fine motor work. You can find those in the art section. And then I found some more molds in the clearance section. So don't forget to check there to see if they have any good finds. Now let's talk about manipulatives and loose
loose parts. These are things that you can manipulate within your sensory bin. You can add as a theme, you can count them, you can use them for learning. Things to consider for this is do you have a theme of your sensory box? The one I'm putting together is more of a fall theme, I think, today. Also check to see what you already have. You might have some little toys from kids' birthday parties already. That would work really well. Are you wanting to work on a learning skill? Are you wanting to count something? Are you wanting to learn your alphabet and you want something alphabet themed? Make sure that they're reusable so you can use them over and over again in other ways. And then of course, how are you going to store this stuff? Make sure you don't go overboard. Showing you some really great options here in different sections of the store. I like cutting apart paper straws. You can also string yarn through those. In the party section, they have some really cute die cuts that you could use if you have a particular theme like these flowers or even these little sequins here. They're just really shiny and fun. And here are some cookie cutters and some fun different shapes that you can fill up. I really like the alphabet ones too. I think that is a fun option. There's alphabet letters and numbers in here. These would also work really well with some dough. A set of different shaped nesting star cookie cutters, square cookie cutters, circle cookie cutters, and hearts. Pom-poms can also be used as a base, but you can also use them as a manipulative. And feathers also can be used as a base or a manipulative. Google eyes, especially the really large one, are a fun addition. And then don't forget to check out the seasonal section. I found these little bones here. They're dinosaur bones. How fun would this be for my fall bin? These pumpkins are parachutes, but I'd cut those off and I even found some really fun eyeball discs which were large enough that it would make really great counting activities. We have some pop tubes some so fidgets would be a great sensory bin manipulative. Also these little spiders are fuzzy and nice to touch. Let's head on over to my house and I'm going to show you how I put it all together into one for the perfect sensory bin. So I have my container which is larger than I normally have. I normally get the shoe box ones. I'm adding in my corn and I was really worried that they wouldn't fill up the box enough but it was perfect, you guys. Two bags filled this just right. Not too much, not too little, enough to scoop and pour. I really wanted to add these bones in here because I'm doing kind of a fall theme. I had to put them together. They came in parts. I was gonna leave them apart, but I decided that it might be more fun to actually put them together so the kids can see what it is. Came with a little stand if you wanted to use the stand, but I'm just going to put them all together into these little dinosaurs. They turned out really cute and I had several to the package, so I'm just gonna put these inside all over the sensory bin. You can hide them underneath your base material for the kids to find. You can leave some sticking up for more of an invitation to play. The children can do whatever they want with these, count them, find them, create scenes, imaginative play. So I'm just going to spread them out throughout the bin. I also picked up those pumpkins and these are meant to be little parachute pumpkins that you would throw. You could use them that way and then when you're done with that part and they get all tangled up, you can cut off the string and add your pumpkins to your little sensory bin. This is something that you can use year after year after year. So make sure to keep them when you're done with them. Then those little eyes, they are disc shooters. So I just took the eyes only and added them in for some kind of little spooky theme here. And they came with quite a lot. So we could do some fun adding or subtracting activities with those and counting. They come in different colors. So you can also do color sorting. It just depends on the skill of your child. Next, I'm adding in my tool. I'm gonna use the funnel. I thought it was so cool that it was collapsible. So your kids might wanna play with that and that would fit right inside and I'm gonna also add in a scoop. So I got this kind of rainbow set of measuring scoops and I'm gonna just take out one. I picked the green, it was the smallest one and they can use that to scoop up the corn and use it with the funnel. Now kids are pretty creative when they see these materials. Let them play, let them explore, let them use the materials how they want and then later you can add some learning activities and encourage them to play. Here's how it turned out, it is the perfect sensory bin. Not too much, not too little, lots of variety and things to do. And I'm really liking this corn as a sensory base. It's a lot of fun to touch, to pour and scoop and to play with. You guys are definitely going to have to share your ideas and what you've done with your sensory bins because I like to hear what you're doing too. If you guys like this video, I'm going to pop another one up here on screen for you to go check out next. Make sure to click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.